What's cracking, YouTube family? It's your big homie Wayne, and welcome to another reaction video. All right, so this one right here is um is featuring Candace Owens from Dr. Phil, and the name of it is the debate on reverse discrimination. Let's get into it. Based on what I read, see in the media, talk to people about, this is a topic that almost everyone feels strongly about one way or the other. I, I want to hear what the audience has to say. Yes, sir, in the back. Yeah, if you're white, someone can discriminate against you, but there's no systemic basis to it. But if it's becoming part of the university admission uh, process, if it's determining hiring practices, dismissal practices, uh, in industry, it, is that not systemic? You could nitpick and find little instances uh, on both sides, but I think if you look at it as a whole, then you begin to understand where it's coming from. Who else has a comment? Yes, sir, in the back. My name is Dan, and I, I think it's great that you try to fix some of the inequities that have happened in the past, um, but I don't think it should jump to the front of the line when you're going to college or you're trying to get a job. I think it's important that we address it very early on where a lot of the major issues are happening in the families um, of some of the ones that are maybe disadvantaged or if they're having trouble in school, it started the element. Candace, are we compromising standards yes. if we do that because we haven't fixed the problem down the line? That's correct. It is, the, the policies are harmful also to the people that they purport to help. Um, and we have all of the evidence there to look at. Uh, when you artificially place a black American into a school in which they do not belong based on their knowledge, doesn't mean that they go on to get A's. In fact, there was a black adjunct professor, you guys have definitely heard of him, Dr. Thomas Sowell, uh, who was teaching at Cornell University, and he found that the majority of the black American students that were there were on academic probation. Now, these students were some of the smartest in the nation, but because they were artificially placed amongst their peers at Cornell University, they were failing on academic probation. These policies have never helped black Americans. It's just basically policies that are put in place to make people feel good, right? I feel like I'm doing something, but in fact, I'm actually creating harm. You either know the answers or you don't. When you say, hey, we have black students at a particular school who aren't performing at that school as well, the immediate assumption that you're making is, well, maybe it's because they're not smart enough, they're, they're not good enough, or they don't belong here. Whereas it could be about the experience that they're having at that institution. Professors but, who believe that they're not intelligent enough, that they don't have the capability to do the work, that they see them as criminals, deviants, dangerous, up to no good, or they talk about them with the they statements. They're lazy. They don't care. They don't really belong here. Uh, they're only here for the financial aid. I'm giving you actual facts. No, right? I'm giving so you can, actual facts based on extensive research that's been done. We can say, well, maybe they just don't feel done. good. Um, but that's not the case. I mean, I went, I went to university. I did not feel good, right? I, I didn't pull the best grades in high school, probably got into a better university than I should have gotten into based on my performance in high school. It wasn't because of my feelings. It's because I wasn't focused on it. And that we're talking about a cultural problem that's going on back at home, as was in my circumstance. And none of that is because of institutionalized policy. Um, it almost seems like you guys refuse to accept that, you know, black students aren't performing well. You feel like you have to have this burden of responsibility when, in fact, if you actually wanted to help, you would look at the facts, re-examine the fact that it's not helping anybody, it's not helping black Americans to artificially place them into universities, and you'd make effective change. But you're making the assumption that black students are academically inferior, and they're not. No, they're you some are of our actually, most like, that, brilliant that's what, that's students the, that's that we the have. Basic, no, 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 that you are making the assumption that they are inferior. You just said that they don't belong there. Policies. <laughs> I'm talking about the students that are based on the policies that you are defending right now, saying that we should have these policies that let them into these universities, not based on their skill set, but based on the color of their skin. So you are assuming that they are inferior. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on. <laughs> All right, so there we have the debate on reverse discrimination from Dr. Phil. Um, we have Candace Owens there, and like she was talking to a doctor, Dr. Luke Wood. Um, he, he's a professor at San Diego State University. Um, they had a pretty intense conversation right there, going back and forth. Um, I will say I like to see these type of things happen. I think these type of dialogues do need to happen. Um, as you can see, the majority of the people there in the audience are white. Um, 
I'm sure Dr. Phil has a very, very large white uh, base that watches his programming. Um, but see, here we go right there, man. You have Candace Owens on one side of the spectrum, and then you have Dr. Will on the other side. They both are African-American, so they both have a different experience. Well, they both have an African-American experience, but they both experienced it differently. Um, you know, Dr. Wood, he's a professor at the university, and you know, Candace Owens is a commentator for the most part. Um, so, I think that they both had some good points, right? Um, first, I'm just going to say the studio audience, I think that if it was more of a balance so that you can have more of a back and forth with the, with, with the questions, I think that would work great. But just kind of having it just from one perspective, like I said, majority of people in the audience were white. So just having a white perspective from the audience, I don't think does any due diligence. Um, but to have, um, you know, Candace and Dr. Wood there, um, I think they both made valid points, though. You know, Candace's thing was, you know, um, African-Americans are Candace's thing was the African-Americans are put into these universities and um put into these positions just due to affirmative action and she kind of feels that um i guess based off of the studies of you know thomas soul i don't know how many studies he's done but those studies show for some reason african americans don't do well in college environments i guess um and that can be true that could be true for anybody it's just not an African-American thing. That could be true for anybody. Anybody can go to a university and not fit in. I don't think that because of that, you should take out affirmative action. And then as the professor, as the professor stated, you know, um, it's not true what she thinks um, about that because um, that would be making an assumption that everyone who reaps the benefits of affirmative action um, is not smart enough to to make it at university. And if that was the case, then I don't think that that many people would be getting admitted. Um, that's why I said they both make valid points. Um, Candace Owens does make valid points when she says that, you know, um, some people who may uh, benefit from affirmative action could go to a situation that they're not prepared for. But like I said, that isn't, that doesn't mean because of affirmative action they weren't prepared. It just means that that person individually was not prepared. But that person individually couldn't have been prepared for hundreds of things. Affirmative action is not the reason that they're not prepared. It's just life situations happen. And then you have the professor there who is a professor, I'm sure, has seen people benefit from that and go on to excel. It's saying that that's not true. You know, it's, it's, it's not totally the affirmative action recipients that struggle. It's just a people thing. You know, but that's what I got from it. What did you get from it? Jump down in the comments and let us know how you feel about this one right here. Um, about the debate about the discrimination, the debate on reverse discrimination. How do you feel about reverse discrimination? Jump down in the comments and let us know. Um, are you somebody who's experienced it before? Are you someone who feels that it doesn't exist? He's one who feels it does exist. Um, I think reverse discrimination is a huge thing. Um, I feel like anybody anybody regardless of who you are um you have a, you could be racist it doesn't matter black white whatever you can't be racist um it's just to say that we've seen that over the course of history white people have been the predominant racist people you know but anybody could be racist you know but once again that's how i feel about it i want you guys to jump